Sweden David Dahl. He's the director of Klima 2020, a climate consulting and communications firm based in Norway. Sveden, good to have you on the news hour. So rather than baby steps, uh, the UN Secretary General is calling for some very transformational changes. But with countries like the United States, who's basically pulled out of the Paris uh, Agreement, and you have another big polluter in terms of carbon emissions like China sort of pushing its, its, uh, its targets to, to, to 2030, how committed can we expect other countries to be uh, in the future? It is, of course, a big problem uh, that the big emit emitters is not coming up with uh, pledges now at uh, the meeting in Madrid that uh, will uh, uh, keep the world on track to limit warming to between 1.5 and 2 degrees. The, the situation is so uh, extreme that um, even if all countries is... Um, uh, doing what I pledged to do in Paris four years ago, the global temperature will still uh, increase by more than three degrees. And in addition to that, they are not following what they pledged. So we are actually on a journey towards four degrees, four centigrade warming in this century. And that is a recipe on climate catastrophe. Okay. Um, your country, Norway, uh... It is an exemplary country in terms of the uh, amount of renewable energies it uses internally, but it's one of the biggest oil and gas exporters in the world. How do countries sort of balance this as we progress that in the 21st is, century? Uh, that is a very that is a good question, and it is um, in a way so that Norway has a very good economy, which we have from. Uh, in a way, um, oil production that we have um, uh, managed in a very good way. But uh, we are uh, unfortunately not willing to spearhead what is needed, and that is to keep a big part of the current um, oil and gas reserves grounded. Uh, so I should uh, recommend that the rich which countries that can afford would in a way spare it this very uh, necessary action to avoid this global catastrophe. Because if we cannot do that, then we cannot expect other countries to do so. Fair. On the other hand, of course, we say, uh, yes? No, no, I, go ahead. I, I, I do apologize. No, uh, and then uh, we are saying that because the big uh, emitters like China and the US, as you mentioned earlier, earlier is not doing enough, then it is in a way maybe uh, <laughs> not a point that we as a small country, uh, and as a matter of fact, we are not small when it comes to oil production, uh, uh, will we'll spearhead. But unless some of the countries that say that they are willing to really uh, uh, spearhead to solve uh, the problem, uh, then we will not okay. succeed. Okay. Uh, one of the more inspirational characters that we've got to know in the media this year is that of teenage uh, climate activist Greta Thunberg. How do young people like this help the cause? They help tremendously. Uh, by the way, I think Greta Thunberg is uh, coming to uh, Spain uh, tomorrow. Uh, she is uh, sailing uh, across the Atlantic. I. I listen to her speech in Katowice a year ago and I talk a lot to young people and it is absolutely clear that those who have contributed the most to in a way speed up the necessary change that is the young people and the reason why I say this and the reason why for instance today I talk to a number of students is that uh, with the school strikes now, uh, the Secretary General, uh, the progressive leaders of the world, when they argue for uh, stronger action, which is absolutely necessary, then their arguments, they are referring to what we see the young people is doing now. So I cannot uh, underline uh, more than what we see now with the young people, the leaders of the future, that is the hope we have to solve the situation, because the politicians that now are in Madrid, they will not do it. Okay, let's talk action, sir, because it seems the sense at COP25, the general feeling is one of great urgency. Everyone is talking about uh, this 
point of no return. Antonio Guterres said it's no longer beyond the horizon. What can we expect in terms of concrete action coming out of Madrid? Unfortunately, I don't think a lot. Uh, it is the next year in Glasgow that um, uh, countries are going to come up with new ambitions. And of course, uh, for instance, uh, Chile and Spain as co-hosts, they want to uh, come up with a list of, of countries that is committed to increase the actions. So, uh, but to take something that could be done very fast and wouldn't cost a lot of money, but would need a political will is, for instance, just to put a ban on subsidizing or fossil uh, uh, fuel. Uh, actually, we subsidize fossil fuel with something like 6.5% of the global GNP every year. And if we also stopped deforestation or tropical rainforest, we will, those two actions together, that is, we talk about um, we talk about uh, politics and not so much money would cut emissions by something between 35 and 40 percent. Mm. But the reason why this is not happening, which could be done, is lack of political commitment from the people around the table in Paris. Okay. So, David Dahl, thank you very much for joining us. Good luck with everything. I do appreciate you coming out of the news hour.